Welcome to the second part of analyzing Summer's End. If you haven't watched the previous video, please go and watch that first because we looked at some macro techniques that span across the poem and also conducted an in-depth analysis on the first part of the poem after the summer season. Now let's unpack Picnic together. The first thing that we can recognize in this part of the poem is that the setting has now changed. So it's now set in autumn and the seasonal symbolism here is suggesting that the persona as one who is a lot more mature than before. Also note how the first part of this poem is imbued with strong emotions. We start off with the motif and like the lexical chain of fire. So you can see how I've highlighted them in purple. And throughout we have metaphor or like the synesthesia of smoke was bitter. And the similes like, you know, um, flame like slander. And we also have the alliteration of the plosive B sound in this section here that adds to the personification of babbling with anger. So we have strong and bitter emotions that pervade the beginning of the poem, but you can make note of how there are tinges of grief that we could also recognize. And that's evident in the, so I've written that here. Um, it's evident in the section here, where we see the paradox of savor of sadness. Um, so if you're unsure as to why it would be a paradox, you could consider the connotations associated with each word. So savor is generally a bit more positive in that we're enjoying something to the fullest, um, which is in contrast to the connotations associated with sadness, which is a lot more negative. Um, and another interesting thing that you might be able to make note of in this section is that at the very beginning, I've just mentioned how there are a lot of strong and bitter emotions and that's kind of subverting our expectations of the title because the title is Picnic and we don't really think about such strong and bitter emotions when we think about a picnic, do we? Um, you could also make note of how the crossed blades of sunlight here, yes, it is a metaphor, but it also reminds us of the line, mortal swords are crossed in young girl at a window. Um, which was a line that sought to capture the emotional tension that was felt by the young persona who was standing at the edge of childhood. You could also make note of the sibilance here. So we have a lot of a sound here, so crossed blades, sunlight, but even in the uh, previous sentence, we have savor, sadness, smoke, and you can make note of how that's adding to the sense of hissing sound. But more importantly, what we can see here in the short truncated or the short indented line in Down the Gully is a tonal shift. So I've written it down here for you. And the imagery of twig boats on the rapids take us back to this idea of youthful innocence. And you could also make note of how Dobson makes use of the color symbolism of brown and golden and it kind of strays away from the bitterness that the persona associated autumn with at the beginning. Um, but I feel like the persona is not necessarily enjoying herself fully at this point in time as we are reminded of the inevitable passage of time where the young persona is thrusted into a new stage of life. See how there is a tension created here as well between this idea of twig boats and rapids. Um, you could also make note of the diacope in the parentheses years and years ago that works together with the polis in the tin in and maiden hair and mosses that emphasizes how much time has passed. So it essentially creates this image of not necessarily neglect, but more so this idea of the accumulation of time where the maiden hair fern grows and mosses build up. Um, and for those of you who didn't know, maiden hair is a type of fern. Um, you could also make note of the diction of resentfully here that captures this idea of lament as, and yearning as well as the ellipsis here, which is like the dot 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 that reenacts the trailing off of the persona as they reflect upon the nostalgic memories of the past, 
that they'll never be able to actually or literally return back to. And another thing that you might want to consider that I didn't mention previously um, is the diction of slipped. So you could also make note of how the passage of time, um, it sort of like cannot be stopped and it time just slips through your fingers. So essentially, in regards to the tonal shift that I was talking to before, the persona returns to the self of the past. And yes, there is this uh, momentary sense of joy that comes from the return to the memories of youthful innocence. But I think you could also make note of how there is also a sense of lament and nostalgia that is coming from this idea of how Yes, she could contemplate upon the past and she could contemplate upon her youth, but she can't actually return back to the past. She can't actually go back to the past. Um, and in the previous video, I also mentioned something to do with cyclicality in Picnic. And what I mean by cyclicality here is the structure in which we start off with one idea and we kind of return to it at the end and that's sort of seen in this idea of fire because we started the poem with this idea of fire and then we come back to the idea of fire in this section again but what's interesting to note is that the strong and intense emotions that mark the beginning of the poem so the strong and bitter emotions that mark the beginning of this poem it can no longer be seen rather the metaphor here of watching for a child to run back through time to a picnic captures the complex emotions of the persona where reflection upon the past has become both a source of joy and consolation but also a source of yearning and nostalgia and i've written that down here for you i mean you could also make note of like the capitalization of time and also the titular reference to picnic but I'm not sure if that's like the biggest thing that you can write about here so that comes to the end of the poem analysis. And now if we move on to paragraph writing, the paragraph that I want you to have a go at writing is on the question, what ideas on nostalgia does the poem Summer's End explore? If I narrow that down for you a little bit, you might be able to think about the complexity that is associated with nostalgia in which nostalgia can be an experience of consolation, can but it could also be an experience of yearning. So there are two contradicting kinds of experiences that coexist at the same time. And you can make note of how trying to negotiate the tension or the conflict um, is an inevitable part of the human experience of growing up or growing old. So that's not the only thing that you could talk about, but just as a starting point, I've just narrowed it down for you. Um, so that is the end of today's video and I'll see you in the next video to unpack the conversation.